Yo, what is up? I hope you're doing amazing today. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Austin. I do Animal Crossing uh, content, tutorials, stuff like that. So if you're into that, feel free to subscribe. And um, yeah, so this video is going to be the bell guide for 2022. So last year I made a bell guide. It did pretty well. It's one of my best videos on this channel. So I thought it was time to kind of redo it because Animal Crossing has had a lot of updates. We've had that 2.0 update. And you know, a lot has changed. There's some new ways to make bells. So let's get straight into today's video. All right, so the first method that we're gonna talk about is called the bell boom ordinance, all right? So what is the bell boom ordinance? Basically, if you sell an item, you're gonna get 20% more bells uh, just for selling items. Keep in mind that the shop prices are also going to go up uh, if you turn this on. However, if you're doing a lot more selling than buying, it's totally worth it. All right, so the second method that we're gonna talk about is called farming. Now, I love farming because you don't really need a whole lot of bells to actually get started with farming. And you have the potential to make a lot of bells. It's really easy to get started with farming. All you gotta do is see leaf and leaf will set you up with all the crops you can get. Um, you can also get crops from the mystery islands in the Cap'n Islands as well. Each crop sells for 350 bells each. And, and if you have the bell boom ordinance turned on, it's 420 bells each. It takes about three days for your crops to grow. Um, after that, you can harvest them uh, every other day. And really, the sky is kind of the limit with this because the more crops you have, the more bells you can make. And crops don't really take up a whole lot of space on your island. So you can just like dedicate like a little portion of your island to having a ton of crops. And yeah, you're going to make a lot of bells every other day. I actually have a video where I was farming some pumpkins and I started with like 16,000 bells and then I ended up making 120,000 bells every other day. So it's definitely a really good method if you don't really have a whole lot of bells. All right, so the third method that we're going to talk about is the time travel method. And basically how you do this, you got to time travel one month ahead to generate bank interest, all right? Uh, at the first of every month, you're going to get a letter from the Bank of Nook showing how much interest you made. Now, this interest does cap out at 9,999 bells. That's like the max interest you can get. Now, the fourth method is the weed method. All right, so Leaf can buy weeds from you for twice as much as the Nooks. Uh, basically, the Nooks will pay like 10 bells per weed, whereas Leaf will pay 20 bells per lead. So if you have a bunch of weeds on your island, maybe you've been doing like some time traveling or maybe you just took a long break from Animal Crossing, you can actually pick up all those weeds and take them to Leaf and kind of sell the weeds uh, to Leaf. And in case you're kind of unfamiliar with Leaf, I know in the last tip when I mentioned Leaf, I didn't really uh, explain how to get him. Basically, he comes to your island uh, on random days. But you can also get him a permanent shop on Harv's Island. And if you're unfamiliar with Harv's Island, I have a whole entire video dedicated on how to basically uh, unlock everything in Harv's Island. We go over the shops and all that good stuff. All right, so the next method, number five, is the seashell method. Now, seashells are a really fast and easy way to make bells in Animal Crossing. This is one of the first things that I would recommend if you're basically starting from scratch. Let's say you started all over from the beginning, you got absolutely nothing and you need bells. Well, you can make some pretty good money for selling seashells. Uh, seashells spawn every single hour uh, on your island. I was just walking through my island the other day and I was picking up all the seashells on there and I sold them for 10k uh, at the Nook's Cranny. Now I did have the Bell Boom Ordinance turned on so if you don't have that turned on you may get a little less than what I got. So basically every single day at the Nook's Cranny uh, the Nooks will buy a crafted item from you. Uh, this will be like a random item and they'll buy that item for twice as much as the usual price. So this could be worth doing if you already have the materials um, saved up. I wouldn't just like search for the materials and do this. That may take a little bit too much time. But if you already have the materials, it could be worth it. The hot DIY item for me was a stone stool and I already had a bunch of stones uh, in my storage. So I went ahead and crafted a bunch of stone stools and I got some bells for it. All right, so number seven, selling items to the Nook's Cranny or selling on Nookazon. So selling items is a good way to make bells. Um, you can like clean out your storage. If you see like anything in your storage that is no longer of use to you, uh, basically just sell it, um, get rid of it. You can actually make a lot of bells from doing this. I know me personally, sometimes I'll just buy a bunch of items or I'll find a bunch of items and I'll just stick them in storage and I won't even use them. 
Now, obviously, you know, you can make a lot more bells if you sold uh, your items on Nookazon. However, I, I know that not everybody has Nintendo Online, so if you have Nintendo Online, definitely worth looking into uh, selling your items on Nookazon. Number eight, the bell voucher method. This isn't something that I normally do just because I think that it's harder to get Nook Miles than it is to get Bells. But if you have a ton of Nook Miles and you don't have a lot of Bells, uh, you can always exchange 500 Nook Miles for 3,000 Bells. Now, I do have a video uh, showing how you can get 500 Nook Miles every minute. It's a little exploit that I found. Feel free to check out that video to learn more about that. All right, number nine, Money Trees. What are Money Trees? Basically, if you ever notice this glowing spot on your island, uh, you can dig it up and you can get some bells and then you'll see that this uh, glowing spot, you know, this this hole is like glowing, right? Well, you can actually put uh, some bells back into that hole and it'll plant a money tree. You can like turn 1,000 bells into like 3,000 bells or turn 10,000 bells into 30,000 bells. Now personally, I wouldn't plant more than 10,000 bells just because uh, any amount over that doesn't guarantee a profitable return. So if you plant more than 10,000 bells, you're basically gambling after that. Now you can also get bells from shaking regular trees, right? I really do this just because the amount you get from just shaking trees isn't really a whole lot. So it's not something that I typically do. All right, number 10, money rocks. So basically every day on your island, one of your rocks is gonna generate bells for you. Now you can actually get more money from the money rock if you go and see Katrina on Harv's Island. And if Katrina happens to grant you good luck with money. If uh, Katrina grants you good luck with money, then the amount that you get from the money rock basically doubles. Another thing too is to get the maximum amount from the money rock, uh, be sure to dig holes around the rock, right? All right, number 11, let's talk about non-native fruit. Okay, so non-native fruit is a great way to make bells in Animal Crossing. It's very similar to farming. Uh, it doesn't require a whole lot of bells. However, non-native fruit trees do take up more space than crops. So just keep that in mind if you don't have a whole lot of space on your island to dedicate a certain part to non-native fruit trees. Now, non-native fruit is actually worth a little bit more than just regular crops. So with non-native fruit, you get 500 bells per non-native fruit. Uh, 600 with the bell boom ordinance being turned on. And obviously, the more fruit trees you have, the more bells you're going to make. So how do we get non-native fruit? Well, basically, you can get non-native fruit by visiting other people's islands. Uh, if they have a different fruit than you have, you can uh, snatch their fruit and take it home with you. Um, now, if you don't have Nintendo Online, so you can't visit other people's islands, you can also get non-native fruit from Captain's Islands, uh, the Mystery Islands. Uh, also, too, uh, your virtual mom will actually send you a non-native fruit in the mail uh, some point in your Animal Crossing journey. Number 12, Blue Roses. Now, Blue Roses are an amazing way to make money in Animal Crossing. Basically, how it works is you just take a bunch of Blue Roses and you craft them into Blue Rose Reefs, right? And then you sell the reefs. So I made about 800 thousand uh bells full inventories worth right so i sold a full inventories worth and made about eight hundred thousand bells and i can make that every other day if i want to if i want to harvest my blue roses every other day but um yeah if you want to learn more about blue roses and growing your own blue rose farm i actually have a guide that breaks it all down step by step all right so number 13 selling bugs fish sea creatures and fossils i kind of put all these into one category because they're kind of all the same in a way but basically, you can make pretty good money doing this. Uh, you can sell fish and bugs that are rare. Uh, rare ones sell for a lot, actually. And there's this beaver named CJ. You've probably heard of him. Uh, basically, he'll buy your fish from you for 1.5 times more bells than you would get at the Nook's Cranny. And also, too, uh, Flick, he'll buy your bugs from you for uh, 1.5 times more as well. So if you ever see uh, either of them on your island and you want to make some bells, uh, fishing and catching bugs is a pretty cool way to do that. You can also sell sea creatures and fossils. That's a good way to make a lot of bells. Just don't forget to donate the first one you get to your museum. That way you can finish your museum. Okay, so number 14, turnips. Let's talk about turnips, right? Now, I know a lot of people hate turnips. They think they're hard. They think they're complicated. Uh, it's really not that complicated, really. Uh, they are a little challenging, though, but turnips work exactly like the stock market, right? So you buy them at a lower price, you sell them for a higher price. Uh, the turnip prices actually change twice per day. You'll get a turnip price in the morning, and you'll also get a turnip price in the afternoon. 
and there are patterns for turnips, right? So there are actually four different patterns uh, for turnips to look out for. There are the small spike uh, pattern, the large spike pattern, uh, the decreasing pattern, and the random pattern. All right, so you can basically track these patterns um, just, to, just to figure out what pattern that you have so you'll know when the best time it is to sell. Now, honestly, I think that's a lot of work to do. Uh, I don't really do that. Uh, an easier method would be just, just to use services like the Turnip Exchange or use Facebook groups or Discord groups. That is if you have Nintendo Online. Now, something that me and my friend did uh, to sell turnips, basically, like, I had Daisy May on my island, and she was, like, uh, time traveling every day to find the best turnip price, and whenever she got a high turnip price, uh, she would come to my island and uh, buy a bunch of turnips, and I would buy a bunch of turnips on my island, and then we would both go back to her island and we would sell the turnips. And that was an easy way for us to make millions. Number 15, duping, right? So in case you didn't know, you can actually duplicate your items in Animal Crossing. It's kind of like a glitch um, that you can do. I have a whole entire video breaking this down, but basically, you know, you can dupe like any type of item, uh, full inventories worth. So if you have like a bunch of Royal Crowns or a bunch of Nook Mile tickets, you can basically uh, clone them and get another set. And you can either sell your items and make a fortune, or you can just keep them for your own personal use. All right, and I saved the best method for last, number 16. So this is basically the secret to getting max bells on your island. Uh, you might have seen people have like 999 million bells. Uh, basically how they did that was they actually visited a treasure island. Now a treasure island is just a regular island that's on a modded switch. Now you don't have to necessarily mod your switch. Not every switch can be modded. You have to have a certain switch with like a certain model number. But it's just much easier just to like not do that and just go visit one uh, because there's tons of treasure islands that are free. Uh, you can find them on Twitch and it's really simple how it works, right? So basically you just go to a treasure island. You'll see a stack of turnips. Uh, it'll be a stack of 30, right? And all you got to do is pick up that stack of 30 and you go and you sell it to the Nook's Cranny. If you ask Timmy and Tommy uh, what the turnip price is for that day, they'll tell you that they're buying turnips for 999 million. And when you go and sell it, you'll see like a negative number, right? Once you sell it, that negative number, you'll actually get 999 million bells in your bank account. Now, I know that sounds crazy. It, you know, it, it sounds like, you know, it's too good to be true, but it's 100% legit. That's how I got my max bells. And that's how a lot of other people get their max bells. But um, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, this bell guide. If you want to see more content from me, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.